it's really weird how time goes by so fast. And that's where it all started. I took on this challenge for multiple reasons. I wanted to experience it too. That feeling of being in a different world for a long period of time, that feeling of being disconnected from everything and everyone and being fully immersed in a different environment. But if all of this is possible in pretty much any VR game or app, why did I specifically pick Minecraft? The answer is simple. Minecraft offers a lot of stuff to do, and that was absolutely necessary if I was going to spend 24 hours in a single game. That, and the fact that I want to see how the time difference would impact me in the end. Minecraft's day and night cycles only last for 20 minutes, whilst in real life, they last 24 hours. I'm going to spend 72 days in Minecraft while only spending 24 hours in real time. This is 24 hours in Minecraft VR. Should be live. Oh my goodness. When starting up the game, you instantly realize the fact that for the next 24 hours, this place will be your home. Taking that into account, I was very optimistic and ready to get started and create something amazing. That being said, my optimism was tested fairly quickly. Come on then. Oh god, we're almost dead. No! Stop it! Wow. That's great. That's a great start. No! God! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! After dying over and over again and oh getting used to God, probably the most serious? weird control scheme I've ever had to deal with, I knew this was going to be harder than I thought. And so it was for the first few hours. But eventually, and I still don't really know how, but I built my first house. So far, I experienced zero dizziness or nausea and my eyes were still 100% okay. I was getting used to the world I was in. The only thing that I felt was present was the cable right on top of my VR headset which was constantly being pushed onto my head by my audio headset. As I ventured on and explored my surroundings, I came across a beautiful location where I knew I had to build my actual house at. So I went back, took all my stuff, returned to the new location and started building. Aw oh, yes. Oh, we just saw this earlier. Look how beautiful this place is. Oh my god, I might have to move my stuff here. I can build like a dock here, and then we go out to the sea that way. Get a horse. Hell yeah, dude. It went pretty alright for the next couple of hours. My current goal was to set up a nether portal and hop on over into the nether. The end goal here was to eventually reach the end of the game. But that goal was far away, and I knew for a fact that I wouldn't make it without sleep. You're basically standing still for 24 hours straight, and that's in real time. But at one point, because you're so immersed in this world, it starts to feel like you've been standing for days. So eventually, your legs will tell you to take a break. I had three sleep breaks, two of which lasted about two hours, and one long one that lasted four hours. Sleeping with the headset on wasn't really a problem. The only thing I quickly noticed is that I couldn't move my head around too much, as that would make my audio headset fall off, so I had to lay down perfectly straight. I just wish I didn't build a chicken farm right outside of my bedroom. Waking up in VR is a weird thing, for the first three seconds. I always thought I'd go on a complete trip when waking up inside of a game, because when you're asleep, you kind of forget about what's going on. But VR proved me wrong. I mean, yes, for the first few seconds, you're like, where am I? But then you instantly realize and snap back to what you were doing, and everything is fine. So I started off my next few days. days working on the house, gathering resources, exploring my surroundings, and killing a few skeletons here and there. And let me just say, I am convinced these guys had something against me. There were so many skeletons. 
Again, three skellies, man. Oh, that was... No! My primary goal at this point was to find diamonds. The first few hours had passed, and normally around this time, I'd have a bunch of them. I didn't find anything yet, though, until I came across a large ravine. This whole segment of exploring the cave system that was underneath my house the entire time was a very dangerous yet very rewarding journey. I am so terrified. I don't have I, I don't have a fear of heights, but if I did, I'd have lost my shit by now. Oh, go up, please. Okay, we made it. There have to be diamonds here, right? Come on. <sighs> I'm about to cross. So if I die now, I will regret it. I will never forgive myself. Diamonds. Hello. Maybe, hold on, maybe. Maybe we got some over here. Give me a break. No, I don't need lapis, man. Yes, yes. I found him. Oh, I'm so happy right now. Okay, please do not let me die. We got three, that's perfect. You know what? I am going to bring obsidian straight away. Here comes the long process of getting enough. When I finally set foot into the nether portal, that's where the first dizziness kicked in. We all know the world animation that plays when you go through the portal and you can clearly tell it was not made with VR in mind. It really felt as if I was going through a time machine. Everything started spinning and the whole world around me started to deform and before I knew it, I was in a completely different dimension. Surviving the nether is quite a task in VR. Not only can you fall to your death pretty much anywhere, there's also these giant gasps waiting around every corner. Now I expected I could do it, seeing as I was now used to all the controls and the VR mechanics of the game. I was wrong. This is a very dangerous place. Oh my god, no, 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 no! As with everything though, I learned and adapted over time and eventually was capable of roaming around without dying. Coming back from the nether, my next task was to acquire ender pearls, which I'd need later for the end portal. Now endermen don't spawn as often as the other mobs, but luckily in VR the world is a playground and so I spawned in just a few of them. There were still zero signs of any nausea apart from being inside the boat. I didn't really know I could row a boat as fast as I did, but because of the insane speed, my mind wasn't able to keep up and resulted in minor nausea. As for time, I was at this point where time wasn't really a thing anymore. I like to compare it to the moment when you're so tired, you're not even tired anymore. And as much as time wasn't an issue at this point, sore muscles really were. Because of the time difference being so huge, I feel like somehow my mind thought that I'd been walking for days on end and actually fooled my muscles in some way, making them able to last longer. I think at this point I was standing straight for a good 8 hours. And the moment I lay down to sleep, is when I really, really started to feel it. And so getting back up again was even harder. As the sun rose on day 60, I only had 4 hours left to make my way to and fight the dragon in the end. I geared up as best as I could, and headed out to face him. Let's just say that I almost got him. Oh sh- Dude, that thing is- Oh my god. <laughs> that was that. Getting completely oh destroyed by the Man. dragon, I gave up on completing the game as I lost all of my loot and it was only a few cycles left until the 72 days mark. I did want it to end with at least one goal being completed, so I finished my house. I think what we do is we add one, two, three more blocks and then add like... The last few days were very quiet. It was relaxing, really. I was just mining, building, and talking to the chat. However, as with everything, the final hour felt like it took the longest of them all. I'm going to sit down here while we mine that heck out of this cave. But I'm happy it did. It gave me enough time to create some sweet fireworks and get to a nice spot where I could end my journey. I climbed up a tree with nothing but fireworks, sat down, and watched the sunrise one final time. It's really weird how time goes by so fast. Come on. Ten more seconds, dude. Let's go. Yes! We did it! Oh, thank goodness. I am so done. Oh, oh, sh No! No! <laughs> We're taking this thing off after 24 hours of streaming, and I look like this right now. 
Oh, I feel so good. Wait. <gasps> no. Oh, that's bad, dude. My nose. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god. Hello. Whew. The rest of the day and the following few days went by very slow for me. I feel like I didn't stream for 24 hours, rather a few minutes, and looking back at it, it feels like I just skipped a day. To me, this proves that time is and will always be one of the most interesting concepts there is. It also shows that VR really is something else. And we're just scratching the surface.